काबा तीसरा दिन माय थर्ड डे इन इंडिया यू नो इट इज टेकन मी अ लॉन्ग टाइम टू कम बैक टू लुक अगेन आई एम ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ द रिवर गंगा माँ वुड ऑलवेज टेल मी हर स्टोरी how she is not just a river but a goddess how that mountain is not just a mountain but a god and how that tree is really not a tree but god flowing as the tree so many stories so many songs i wonder what mars india is what i have lost and what i'm to find again in life are expected they may happen or they may not that's a good sutra to remember especially when you're attempting a dive into what is perhaps this world's oldest living religious thought acha people ko hum log vishnu avatar mante hain ha inka inki puja hoti hai hai yahan to हर चीज पत्थर में जब भगवान मानते हैं तो पेड़ में भगवान मानते ही हैं है कि नहीं यस द हिंदू थॉट टाइमलेस रियली थ्री थाउजेंड फाइव थाउजेंड हु नोज हाउ मेनी इयर्स ओल्ड एंड टू टॉप दैट डाइवर्स नो सिंगल फाउंडर नो सिंगल बुक नो सिंगल राइट नो सिंगल रॉन्ग Yes, it's a challenging landscape, but here they tell me the story is simple. No theory, only experience. One on one, direct. Pantu Maya, 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 paisa, 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 paisa. Maya ke wo pujari aage ka kuch fikar hai. Is ghar se aur aage. The word for Hindu philosophy is darshan. It means seeing, not just information, but transformation. You're not good enough. You don't have enough. You're not tall enough, thin enough, rich enough, famous enough. Okay, you are born into a good family. You have a good education. You get married. You climb the corporate ladder. You get to the top. You earn so many millions of dollars. Fine, but is that one's life? Baba, love affairs, ambition, success, failure, happy. Sad. Everything coming and going, coming and going, appear and stay for some time, and goes away. The real is that which is present, eternally, has always been, will always be. The opposite is the unreal, constantly changing. In between is Maya, that. which appears as real eternal but is always in flux something like a dream when you're asleep it's real when you wake up it's gone the beauty of hinduism is its transcendental nature there is a transcendence of the physical even the dream even the causal to go beyond all three states of being and this 
gift which India gives, it's a key. If you know how to use the key, it helps you in every situation. It helps you to realize that you are not stuck, that there is a way forward, or put it this way, there is a way beyond the normal situation. You are not condemned to repeat the same process over and over again. A long time ago, perhaps it wasn't such a long time ago. It was the 19th of August, 1975. It was a Wednesday. <laughs> I arrived about 3.30 in the afternoon. I was just going to ask you if you remember. Christopher Quilkey, an Australian miner, arrived in India. Something deep inside of me said, I've come home. It was an actual physical vibration. And I looked down, and again it said, I've come home. Sages in India speak of the entire existence as our home. Rivers, the mountains, the earth, the sky. For many that are thirsty, India is an invitation into a journey towards the universal home. Here, they call it Moksha. It's not really a nation. Not a nation. No, no. It's a bhumi. It's a holy bhumi. It's a holy place. Now, this is one of the wonders of India. No matter how much we think about it and intellectualize India, its philosophy and culture, we cannot comprehend it with our mind. It's something transcendental. And I think that is why Westerners are attracted here, because they cannot control it. It's beyond their powers of analysis, of intellect, and yet they know it's palpable, it's alive. This energy in India feeds people. It feeds their hearts, it feeds their minds but with an energy which is transcendent. It's not something which you can identify specifically. It's just there. If somebody comes to India, you come open with few concepts. And India has that lila, that, that uh, beautiful game which will take you where you have to go, you will meet whomsoever you have to meet, and according to your aspiration, you will find that which you are ready for. No more, no less. India, for me, to be frank, India is a great mother. Once upon a time in Spain, Francisco, 15 years of age, went to school. He was given a book to read, the Indian epic Bhagavad Gita, the celestial song. It was the first thing which I had read in this, my 15 years short life, which had meaning, I mean real meaning. He started practicing yoga, meditation. At the age of 20, some 40 years ago, he came to India and became Swami Satyananda, the one who discovers bliss in the eternal truth. Gita was the, the key, yes. I, I, some of the shlokas were, were, were spoken about Atma, this made a big uh, impression. I will call that Purva Jamma Samskar. If I have to explain it, it is a Samskar for, from a Purva Jamma, from another life. And that put me in touch with that trend. Na Priyam Prapya No Dvije Prapya Cha Priyam Thira Buddhira Gammudaha Hindus have searched and searched deep beyond dualities, beyond the transient, for the one, the eternal, 
the Supreme Self, the Absolute, Brahma, divine ground of all that is, Sat, Chit, Ananda. Truth, Consciousness, Bliss. दूलन ये परिवार सब नदी नाव संजोग उतरी परे जहां तहां चले सबे बाटू लोग बाबा हिंदूस कॉल रिलिजन अ स्पिरिचुअल एडवेंचर the adventure is long and often not easy. You see my friend Carlos, he's having a tough day. Maya, of course, Maya. Yes, I'm working on it. <laughs> Maya. It's Maya. A boatwala stopped for a chai. I mean, he really stopped. He forgot all about time or about poor Carlos who's getting very late. I love it here. I guess it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. You know, the things that makes you love it is the things that annoy you. You know, that flexibility that anything can happen, everything is fluid, approximative. But sometimes when you need to get somewhere, that's where <laughs> you get, you know, the hard part. Time here works. Did I just say works? यहाँ तो हर आदमी अपना अपना पार्ट करने आया है। जैसे कोई राजा का पार्ट कर रहा है, कोई पंडा का कर रहा है, कोई पुजारी का कर रहा है, कोई विखारी का कर रहा है, हाँ, कोई कबाड़ी का कर रहा है। हर आदमी अपना अपना पार्ट कर रहा है। जिस काम में, जिस धाम में, या जिस नाम में रहो। the Hindu tradition is of many, many lives, many philosophies, many cultures, subcultures, and many more. Gods, 33 million. Men's ocean. Some of the popular gods with many stories include the preserver, Vishnu, his ten incarnations, including the noble Ram and the multi-dimensional Krishna, the destroyer Shiva with his multiple forms as a cosmic dancer, a renunciate, a lover. And there is also the mother goddess, Shakti, with her numerous forms. You see, Hinduism has no one founder, no one book, no one practice, and some would say, not even one name. The name Hindu came when the Persians uh, came in this, this way, from this side of, the, of India, Bharat. The people who lived on the other side of the Indus, River, the Sindhu River, what we call uh, Hindus. And then with the Muslims and, and the English, that the word Hindu started to to be connected with the religious tradition or the, the spiritual tradition of the people living in that area. But the real name of uh, Hinduism is Sanatana Dharma. In the olden texts, we don't see the word Hindu. Sanatana Dharma means the eternal Dharma. It's not founded by anybody does not depend on any book or a particular teaching. It's part of the cosmos. It's understanding the rhythm, understanding the rhythm of the cosmos. That is Hindu Dharma. Being in tune, being in harmony with that rhythm. A Hindu can go to a temple to pray. Another can just laugh at all the rituals and say, Jente kare su puja. There are hundreds and thousands of different approaches because Hindu Dharma 
accept the multiplicity and the variety in nature. In nature, do we look at these trees? Not one is the same as the other one. So all human beings, we have all different potentialities. And that great uh, mother, which is Hindu Dharma, gives us different ways of approach to each one of us. Normally, religion has a book, a teaching, and, and one way. That is not there for Hindu Dharma. That's why sometimes Westerners have difficulty in understanding uh, Hinduism, because things are like this in one place, and they are the other way around in the other place, and then there is no something completely different. They say, well, then what? This plus that plus that plus many more. The possibilities are infinite. That's the beauty of The greatness of India is that it has maintained a continuous flow from ancient times of a consciousness which we today cannot quite fathom. To give you an idea, the Vedas, which were created three, four, five thousand years ago, are still alive today. This is quite remarkable, that there is a living force, a vibration, which nourishes, which feeds the Indian psyche. Baba, this is the 21st century. Now the Vedas were created thousands of years even before Christ. Some say 3000 BC. And here Christopher was saying that Vedas still live within the Indian psyche. I looked within. And then I remembered a song I have heard since I was a child. Lead me from untruth to truth. From darkness to light. From death to immortality. What's the greatest gift that India has given to the world? The Veda. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it's the Veda, you know, it's all in the Veda, and the Rig Veda and the Sama Veda, and how creation comes, the reverberation of sound. You no, know, we come from a world of nothingness, and yet this looks all surreal. And there's a whole mechanism of how it happens, and it's explained in the Veda. The Egyptians have the pyramids, the Greeks have the Parthenon. China has the Great Wall of China, whereas India has the Vedas. So it's not made in stone, and this is the difference between India and other civilizations. The Indian heritage is based on sound. It's not based on stone. So you cannot pinpoint it as such. And this sound permeates the whole of India, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, it influences, you could say, it is part of what India is. India would be nothing without this mesh. You could call it a mesh, it's a subtle mesh understanding. Mangalam, Udaka Mangalam, Udaka Mangalam, Agni Mangalam, Agni Mangalam, Vayu Mangalam, Vayu Mangalam, Dagana Mangalam, Dagana Mangalam, Surya Mangalam, Surya Mangalam, Chandra Mangalam, Chandra Mangalam, Jagata Mangalam, Jagata Mangalam, Jiva Mangalam. Jiva Mangalam, Deha Mangalam, Deha Mangalam, Mano Mangalam, Mano Mangalam, Atma Mangalam, Sarva Mangalam, Bhavatu Bhavatu Bhavatu, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Mahakumbh, the world's largest gathering of people. A pilgrimage that happens every 12 years 
since God knows how many years. Hindus from all over are here celebrating Sangam, the merger of India's three sacred rivers. Ganga and Yamuna, present in their physical form. But the third, Saraswati. Saraswati Mata Gupta Nadi, who nahi dikhti. Who antar wali, who nahi dikhti. The ghar mein mata bhain log teen choti banati hai. Ghar mein banti hai, usko complete karne ke baad do dikhti hai, usi tarah ye bhi rehti hai. Rehti teen hai, dikhti do hai, complete hone ke baad. Bas itna hi. Sometimes I feel India is also like Saraswati, essentially present. I realize the base of the Hindu pyramid may be many, but its apex is one. Weaving together, the many to the one are two ancient threads that run across India. One braids in the sacred with the mundane. Like money is not just money, it is Goddess Lakshmi. A stone is not just a stone, it is Lord Shiva. Namaskar. And a greeting is not just a greeting, it is bowing to the divine in you. Everything here is a doorway to the divine. And the other thread? It constantly directs the inner compass towards transcendence, looking beyond this world of name and form, for the one, the nameless, the formless, the absolute. How come to have the name? There's a girl, a lady, you know. But you are not just that. You have become a culture because time, the river of life has run like that. But to go to the source of the river, you will find you are everything. You are limitless. Bhuma means infinite. Alpha, the human mind is alpha, human intellect. But yourself is Bhuma, the limitless. He says, Alpe Sukham Nasti, there is no joy in the limited, in the complete, the perfect, the whole, the infinite. Alone is joy. KVS, KVS. I met him under an old banyan tree. A wanderer, a seeker, an inquirer in the inner laboratory. I think therefore I am, Descartes said, the French philosopher. Cogito ergo sum. I think here I am, therefore I don't think. <laughs> I'm sitting in a dark room in the mountains, staring out at the tree. I know there's more to the scene than just the tree. But my vision is limited. I can see not the sky, not the birds or the squirrels, nor the mountain. This confined, limited vision, the Hindus call the mind. This barrier that separates the dance of my breath from that of the tree is what they call the ego, ahankar. I remember Jung, called Gustav Jung, you heard? He wrote, I don't know of any people in the world, in human history, who have such clear idea that ego is the false identity and self is the true identity, like the ancient Indians. This you can call the highest tribute to Hinduism. The windows of my mind, nation, gender, age, class, caste, relations, yes, even religion. I stand
step out and look. Dhyana. A state of being contentless, windowless, out under the open sky. There must be something outside of this little yearning and spending. And being at the mercy of people, somebody says, good, you are happy, bad, you are unhappy. You are mortgaging your happiness to people who are unawakened. So you, you should find out if there is a happiness which is independent of what others think about you or tell about you, which is there all solidly with you. Baba, happiness comes easy in the mornings. So do stories. It was some hundred years ago. A bird lived in the forest. One day a man accidentally shot her. But here, life moves in circles. Soon the bird was born in his house as his daughter, my Amma. For the Hindus, Atma, the soul, is movement. From one species to other, from one body to another. So I could have been a rock, a tree, a bird, a monkey, before I became me. Sansar, in this beginningless, endless cycle of birth, rebirth, we are all related. Life is a vast drama. On the stage, there is good, there is evil. There is joy, there is tragedy. But watching it all, Beyond it all is the unborn, undying, untouched Atma. Here they say it's on a pilgrimage to eternity, Moksha. Kashi is known as Mokshadham, the bestower of immortality. Paradoxically, in its very heart throbs death. I'm at the Mani Karnika Ghat, Mahashamshan, the great cremation ground. Hindus from all over 
bring their loved ones' bodies here for the last rites. On the banks of Ganga, for who knows how long, this scene has been going on and on. Thousands have come, watched, departed. Thousands will come, watch, depart. Some perhaps may realize that sooner or later, we will all be one of the many characters on the scene. देहिनो अस्मिन यथा देहे कौमारम यौवनम चरा तथा देहांतर प्राप्तिर धीर तत्र नमोहति बॉडी इज लाइक अ क्ले पॉट वन ब्रेक्स अनादर इज क्रिएटेड द अनटचड आत्मा मूव्स फ्रॉम द ओल्ड टू द न्यू बट इट कैरीज विद इट रेसिड्यूज ऑफ एक्शंस ऑफ डिजायर्स ऑफ इग्नोरेंस दैट प्रिवेंट इट्स यूनियन with the whole Hindus say each lifetime is an opportunity to realize the true nature of our beings one with the eternal sat chit anand The setting is the building to your left. Yes. Brownish black covered with soot and ashes. Aise bahut log aate hain? Bahut log aate hain. The fundamental myth of Kashi is moksha. Many come here believing it will end the recurrent cycle of suffering and pain. that is sansar the leaf falls the tree stands the tree falls the grove stands the grove finished is finished the forest remains who we are a forest and we think we are a leaf we are afraid of turning yellow losing our green and falling finished मरो वे जो की मरो मरण है मीठा दिस मरणी मरो जिस मरणी गोरख मरे दीठा द डेथ ऑफ द बॉडी अलोन इज नॉट द रियल डेथ द स्वीट डेथ दैट द सेन स्पीक ऑफ इज द डेथ ऑफ द ईको of time of dualities of the small prism called i om trayambakam yajamah sugandham pushte vardhanam urvarukam ev मृत्योर्मुक्षता 
Amritasya Putraha, Children of the Immortal. The art of dying is the art of attaining absolute life. Baba, India, elates, melts, terrifies, shocks, teases my entire being. Her offering is like fire, constantly moving upwards, purifying the real from the unreal. In thousands of ways, she cajoles Choose what you like. Meditation, prayer, dancing, singing, chanting. What you like. But choose. When the universal is our home, our birthright, why remain confined to being just human? I'm in Rishikesh, the yoga meditation capital of the world. People from around 30 countries are here. What brings you here? Spiritual teachings and knowledge. Life. Happiness. Some are looking for a good body. Some for a clean heart. Some for happiness, others for growth. People where we live and everywhere that I go are craving to reconnect with nature, to reconnect with natural rhythms, to reconnect with earth, water, fire, air, and space. And in every way, India holds the treasure, holds the solution for this. People are hungry for what India has to offer. We have so many things. I come from America. We have everything. Everything we need, every material thing, and yet most Americans aren't happy. Because they've lost this Vedic wisdom that tells us to be happy with yourself and not with externalized possession. I have seen very few moneyed people Enjoys things which are dirt free. <laughs> like? The birds, the, the worm on the leaves, the butterflies of different colors, the monkeys jumping from tree to tree, the young ones clinging to the mother. <laughs> Enormous banyan tree from a tiny seed sunshine through the leaves, the river of life dancing past the rocks, the path of least resistance. Imagine even the Vedas told us, and they come from thousands and thousands of years ago before modern telecommunications, before Facebook and the internet and television and telephones and Googling and text messaging. And they told us back then that we need to still the mind. Here is Bhavaram sharing with me his river of life. Once known as Brad Willis, Bhavaram was a successful war correspondent covering some of the most momentous events of our times, Persian Gulf War included. But as always, life had its own plans. Bhava had an accident. 
he broke his back, was declared permanently disabled. Later, he was diagnosed with stage 4 of a rare and typically fatal throat cancer. Doctors gave him two years max. Terminal stage 4 cancer from my coverage in the Persian Gulf War until I wouldn't live for two years. And I was literally on my deathbed when I left Western medicine and ultimately found my way to yoga, Ayurveda, and Vedic wisdom to a complete new approach to life. And that ultimately healed me. Here the word for health is swasthya. Swa, ast. Centered in the eternal self. We have become so used to conflict, chaos, Chaos in this film called Samsara is full of chaos, inevitably, because it's based on the wrong premise. Bye. broken, diseased, or lost we are, our umbilical cord to the eternal continues throbbing within. They say it is simply a question of remembering, reconnecting. Every moment is a possibility. Most of the time we're blind. So we have to wake up. Every moment is a possibility to understand that the imminent is also transcendental. Body is a reflection of nature. On the surface, many waves. Childhood, youth, old age, disease, healing. Yet something deep within remains constant, unchanging, watching. Sakshi, the witness. The witness is the self. It doesn't participate, it only absorbs. The mind participates. It creates the, the drama of life, it participates in it, it suffers. The, the Upanishadic mantra beautifully explains it. Two birds sat on the same branch. Those who parna, samanam, bruksham, parishat vajata. One of them was eating the pipala fruit, the other not eating, just observes. Eating, consuming, identifying with the world of changes on the periphery. Love, hate, success, failure, happy, sad. At the center, unchanging, Eternal, the watcher, Sakshi. Tayor Anya Anashan Abhichakashi. Baba, we are all wanderers here, trying this way and that. Sometimes through love, other times through money, power, to become more, a little bigger. In alpha, in limitation, we don't feel complete. We feel complete only in infinity. But each time, the big becomes small. The horizon keeps shifting. We remain thirsty. 
here in India, they say, big, more, that's not our destiny. Bhuma, infinite, that is our birthright. India has to be the lighthouse for the world in that sense, you know. It's actually India who has to stand against the current of the world and show, you know, this, this is your treasure. It's not in the material world. It's in the non-material that, that you excel. Through different people, different songs, I hear India giving that one single call. Is it like a connection that you feel with something that is ever-present, universal? Yes, it's a totality. It is a sense that everything is complete as it is. Even if it's imperfect, it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. Is that what could be meant by moksha also? <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. Baba, my wandering has just begun.